Oh, Alright guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to go over all 64 decks that are going to be in the March Madness of U150 to kind of give you guys a better idea of um, what Blaine's Last Resort means. <laughs> <laughs> and all that other stuff. Um... We're going to go in order from seeding, so it, it will be all of the one seeds first, all the two seeds, then the three seeds, and so on and so forth. And it's actually also in order of overall seed. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. Without further ado, I'll talk about the number one seed, Magnazone. Greedy Thomas, your thoughts? Uh, I mean, I don't think this deck needs to be talked about too much. It's just all these Magnazones are very good, and the, the deck, the main thing this deck is so good, it has the, uh, the magnetic circuit. But it also has the versatility. It has Zapdos and Amolga to deal with fighting attackers. It has disconnect. It has snipe. It can do. It can blow up anything with maybe some Prime and Pikachu. It's the number one seed for a reason. Yep, I would agree. Uh, the, the thing I love about it is the fact that uh, both Porygon effects are built into the line. Yeah. You're, so you don't need to play an excess amount of support Pokemon because your support Pokemon are your attackers. So. Yep. Makes it really good. Uh, another number one seed, Jump Luff. I believe, didn't I say that this was my pick? Yeah, this one is just very fast, very consistent. Uh, you open up with the Solar Step one, and then transition into the, the Mass Attack one later on in the game. Mm -hmm. And you also have and the Energy Crush one to deal with any sort of Energy Flood decks. Like, uh, Moltres. Like, shut up. <laughs> uh, like Blastoise and, uh, Magnazone. Uh, and the cool part is all of your attackers are one energy attackers. Yep. Um, you just have a lot of, like, it's just a lot of, like, speed and consistency. Yep. So, love this deck. Uh, number three, Kingdra. So, yeah, this is the, the old Kingdra was the Kingdra Parasect, but this is kind of just, just Kingdra, just, like, a very basic Kingdra shell, just because the new Kingdra coming out is very good. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't know, it does 90 snipe if they have any damage on it, Correct. Yeah, the first stack is pick yeah. a Pokemon with damage on it, does 90 to it. Yeah, and we there's the Spray Splash Kingdra that has a power that allows you to put one damage counter on anything, so you just get a Snipe for 90. And then its second attack is also very solid. It's and like, just the Kingdras in general are all pretty solid cards. Yeah, you can just build like a Kingdra thing. You have to deal with it being an EX as your main attacker, but, you know, uh, these three Kingdras all have different weaknesses, so you're never going to get mm -hmm. ran over by that effect. Um, so Kingdra's a very, very solid deck. It does have like a capability. I think it could lose early if it runs against like some sort of non ex de like deck that can take advantage of a trade. But if it can leap those hurdles, it'll be in like the final eight, final four, pretty easily. Yep, I agree with that. Uh, next up, we have uh, Tool Drop. This deck's awesome. This deck's okay, awesome. so the thing here is like. You you attach like there's a cup there's more those multiple tools like bursting balloon that you attach and then they fall off at the end of your opponent's turn, so you attach like bursting balloon to your Garbodor, once you've done all of your shit on your turn, and then your opponent doesn't get abilities for their turn, and then at the end of their turn bursting balloon falls off, and you get abilities back so you get to use all your clay dolls and your Porygons and shit, and then you run a bunch of ways to recycle tools and then your main attacker is the tool drop charge. Yep, because it's built into the Garbodor line regardless. There's a lot of pro there's probably some other attackers that we could use with mm -hmm. this shell, but you know, with with all of the tools you play and the thick Garbodor line, you might as well just be playing dual drop rubbish and just trying to recycle that over and over again. Mm -hmm. so, um, it, it, one sided ability lock is going to be really really good, um, even if you're like sitting on an EX on the bench. That kind of doesn't matter because they're going to be shut down pretty early. Mm -hmm. Really fun. Uh, next up we got uh, Blastoise. Yeah, this one uh, we haven't we haven't actually built yet. We well, just kind of haven't built yet. Yeah, but this is the first one seed that we haven't built yet, and this is just kind of the next of the energy rain attackers. We don't think it'll be good at Magnezone because you don't have that same versatility that all the different lightning attackers bring, but it'll still probably be a very strong contender to get very far. Yeah, a lot of good effects, especially being able to snipe for 100 on the washout one. Um, being able to pick off anything on the bench that you want at any moment is just inherently good. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, got that. I don't know about the EX. I put it on the page just because I wanted to, but we might we might take off the Mega Blast Race. All right. I don't know. It seems fun, but we'll talk about that later, I guess. 
Uh, another number one seed, Gyarados! Okay, so this <laughs> this deck would have been like our two or three seed until we figured out... So the Tail of Revenge Gyarados, it doesn't actually count stuff like Shining Magikarp and Giovanni's Magikarp. Which sucks. So we, we re actually only found that out a couple days ago, so Gyarados is still kind of reeling from this ninja nerf. But you also get this new one from the new set that does 50 times the number of Magikarps in your discard pile for a DCE. So you're basically doing the same thing. You just The deck has to be changed a little bit instead of this no energy, low energy, like, focus on Tail Revenge thing. It's now focused on, like, double double colors energy. It's probably going to be an EX, so double rainbow's not going to work. Mm -hmm. um, so this might be... We'll see. I think just, like, the 120 for no energy is still really strong. Um, yeah. Just because then it's, it's way easier to get those magic cards in the discard. So. So. This deck isn't quite as strong, but it's still a very good contender. I thought I just heard something. Okay. Oh. Someone's talking outside. It's like throwing me off. Okay. Uh, I think this is the last number one seed, right? Or there's a one more. I, get to, I, I think there's one more. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, aggressive fighting. So. When we saw the new Kerbominable, we were like, whoa, this this card is actually pretty fucking solid. So, it's 140, and it's going to be assumingly a non-EX, and does 80, and then, what is it, for each? It's 80 and does damage to itself for each damage counter on it. Yes, so if you go in with no damage, it just does straight 80 for no drawback. Which is really good in this format. And there's also a lot of ways to heal, or you could play Protection Cube to keep yourself from getting hit. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also all these other like fighting attackers that attack for a pretty decent amount for one energy. Um, mm -hmm. So we're just gonna kind of get really aggressive with fighting, and I think it's good enough where like turn one, turn two, you're starting to take really cheap knockouts. Um, yeah, I mean you have strong energy, fighting stadium, focus sash, all that fighting support too. So makes Karina way better in this deck. Mm -hmm. um, I think this deck's just going to be... It's, it's a lot of speed and oppressiveness right off the bat. Yeah. So that's why we put it as number one seed. We don't know yet, because we haven't built it yet, but we'll see. And then you're right, there is one more number one seed. Yeah. The Dust Nora Spread. Sinister Hand is just a busted ability in general. Um, yeah. So any way that we can kind of get spread going is going to be great. We, we haven't really figured out what spread attackers we want to play, or if... It's not spread attackers, and it's just kind of like Dusknor with some other stuff that just deals cheap damage so that we can move it around. Um, hard to tell. The Coco is going to be really good. Coco will be in it probably no matter what version we end up going with. But yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. This is just spread Dusknor dot deck. Yeah, pretty good. I think it's going to be a really. It's a sleeper deck of the tier ones. I think. Uh, moving on to tier twos, uh, Kafa Grigas. So yeah, we kind of, this was like a last minute edition, and then they did a spotlight on the uh, Pokemon TCG 150 page. If you're not on that, you should you should subscribe to that. But, uh, so the, Kof the Kofa Grias' attack you can use for one energy with Dimension Valley, and you just discard as many tools as you want. And then you have all these ways of getting tools with the Slow King lines, and you have, there's two Elisa effects. Yeah, there's Elisa, Elisa, Elisa. And department store girl. Yeah, and then you have Eco Arm. Scott, and Scott grabs two yeah, um, and you can maybe play stuff like Masquerade, so you can just drop your tools and then bring them back if you need more damage with Chuck. And then you can probably run like Tool Drop too as a backup attacker. Just kind of tool. You, I mean, you'll probably run like 15 tools in this deck, something crazy like that. So, would you call this deck a uh, a toolbox focus deck? Uh, <sighs> and actually, no. Uh, hold on. No, it's not Scott. I think it's Castaway. I'm, why is it? I'm Castaway just gets one, I think. Oh, yeah. It's a supporter, a tool, and an energy. Scott yeah. doesn't search for tools. Scott searches for a stadium and a supporter. Boo. Yeah. So, yeah, we think this deck, because you, you can hit very high damage for very low. This deck could be very good, but it struggles against item lock stuff, because then you can't really use your tools very effectively, even though you can still chuck them. But you can't really get them back very easily. Um, but you don't need but to come back with Aftermath and, uh, on the other Slow King. Yeah. So. I don't know. It's fun. So, I think it's going to be a really fun deck. I mm -hmm. forget who it opens against, but we'll talk about that later, I guess. Uh, Weavile. 
the new Weavile is kind of busted new in 50. Uh, mm -hmm. For one energy to 60 to everything with an ability, um, and with all of these bench sitters, uh, spreading 60 for one energy on uh, what's probably going to be a non-EX uh, seems really good. Um, yeah. The problem this deck runs into is if it gets matched against a deck that doesn't have that many abilities, then it's just going to have no damage output, probably. Yep. That's why I think we should include the Vilify Weavile, so that you can at least hit some semblance of damage here and there. Mm -hmm. um, and it also has this hail attack where, like, if there's a lot of 70s or 80s, you can still hail. Uh, this mm -hmm. deck, I think, is going to be very difficult to build. Um, and I don't know if the 2 seed is warranted, especially if it goes up against something with no abilities. I didn't look what its round 1 opponent is, but if it's stuck in a, in a bracket with le like less abilities, it's, uh, it might struggle. But if it finds something with abilities that need that Claydol and Porygon, this deck is going to smash. Like, if this deck runs against, like, Arceus, it'll just straight lose to that. Uh, no, because Arceus level X... Uh, well, you just don't fucking level X it. Um... Well, what if you ask your opponent to politely level X their Pokemon? Oh, okay. So, duh. God, okay. Uh, next up is Metagross! <laughs> Big bopper, uh, baby. Yeah, so if you don't know the ruling on GXs, it's, uh, it counts as two prizes still. So when you GX a Pokemon, your turn ends, kind of like a Mega Evolution. Mm -hmm. But this Metagross GX is so good that that's, we think that's worth the downside of ending your turn with. Oh, yeah. Uh, and if they can't hit 250, 250 is a hard number to hit in U150. Um, mm -hmm. And so basically only a fire Pokemon can pop it. And what you can do is you can play these max potion effects and you have Geotech system and super connectivity from Deoxys to keep Gaia hammering over and over again. And if you make mm -hmm. it a warp, it takes away that this Pokemon can't use Gaia hammer next turn. Um, so you can always just keep like warping into stuff in 150, 150, 150, 150 if you get set up. It's a tank. Mm -hmm. It's a big old tank. It takes a little bit to set up because you're going to need probably all three Metagross in play to make it really, truly effective. Like, there'll be other ways around it, obviously, but um, that like once you get all three of these set up, it's going to be hard to lose a game. Yeah, if you're not playing against Fire or stuff like Magnezone that can still shot 250, then people aren't going to be able to hit the, kill this, and it'll probably just out-tank anything, really. Yep. It's going to outspeed you like crazy. So... I have high hopes for Metagross. Empoleon. Uh, one of the ones that I think the 2 seed might be a bit high, maybe. But the problem is, like, Attack Command Empoleon by itself is really good. Like, just being mm -hmm. able to give yourself out of consistency in your hand, plus a very, very good attack, plus a break that does virtually the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. So, I don't know how this deck is going to look, but... Diving Drawn Polyon by itself is warrant enough for a two seed in, in our opinion. This card just carries the whole fucking archetype. If this if Diving Drawn Polyon wasn't a thing, this would not even be on. This wouldn't even be a deck, I don't think. No, I don't think we it would even be I mean it could beat some of the eight seeds, but I mean, <laughs> I mean there's a lot of things that could beat those eight seeds. I can't wait yeah. to get to those. So So Polyon, and yeah, there's that. Uh subtitle. Yeah, not much to say about this. They all just kind of synergize with attaching grasses and having your grasses count as more. The problem they have is they don't have a very high damage output, necessarily, yeah. but uh, definitely a solid archetype, I would say. So between the energy trance and the nurturing heal, you're going to be able to keep all of your stuff healthy as long as they don't get one shot. Mm -hmm. uh, if your Pokemon don't get one shot, you're just going to be able to uh, tank up and heal and... I, I mean, there's going to be some solid grass basics that we can play with this to uh, combo mm -hmm. well and everything. It's it's, good. it's an interesting deck. It just kind of works fluidly with each other, um, but it can also just falter really early. This might the two C might be high for this deck, but um, it still has that potential to kind of looks like snowball games. The very snowbally deck is more energy on your field, the better. This deck kind of struggles a lot against Hex and Goop as well. I think. Yeah, I would say so. Unless your attacker is. Not, uh, does not really your main attacker by the time you get this up. We'll see. Uh, Machamp! Yeah, so remind me again what the Machamp GX's attacks do again. So the first, I, don't, I forget what the second attack does, but the first attack is the, really the big one. Um, it does 60 plus 60 if your opponent is in uh, an evolved Pokemon. 
Oh, right, okay. So for two energies on a 250 HP Pokemon, you are hitting Evolve Pokemon for 120, or you're just knocking out basic Pokemon with Stormfront. Right. So you kind of have this coverage against uh, um, both uh, evolutions and basics. I'm trying to find the uh, set list right now. I think the 180 is just it's not affected by any effects or anything. If I remember correctly. Oh yeah, the GX is one eight is yeah, just a tr just, just true straight damage. one eight. Yeah. So yeah, this is just another big bulky attacker. You get all the. Oh, uh, uh, so the second attack, Bedrock Breaker, one thirty, and discard a stadium. Okay. So that's what that. So this is just another big bulky dude. You get all the fighting support. Um, it's a, kind of the same thing. It struggles against stuff that can one shot it or like any psychic decks now because they'll probably be able to shot it too. But if you're not running against any of those decks, you probably just out tank them and lose. So mm -hmm. I, I like the fact that you have you have coverage against both evolutions and basics. This deck could actually give Magnezone a good run for its money. I think. Yeah, I think so too. Because um, you can't just rely on Zapdos and Amolga with Take Out Machamp. Yep. So there's that. Uh, and then I think this is the last one. Nope, second to last uh, two seed. Uh, Rainbow Road. Uh, this. This one is hard to say because this is one of those decks that just straight loses to goop and hex, and we've talked about that. Like, if you're playing a deck where when your opponent goops and hex you and you just lose your turn, that's that's probably not a deck you want to go to play. But this deck is so good that it it can maybe deal with that, I suppose. It's got the versatility of being able to like blow something up with Xerneas, uh, and if not, you have a lot of energies on board anyways because of uh, Geomancy and Xerneas Break. Right. So you kind of have this a little. It's just basically like a like a big basics sort of deck, for more or less. Mm -hmm. um, that can that can bop things not necessarily speedily, but like by turn four, you're one shotting like everything in their deck for the rest of the game. Yeah, this would like beat up on the GX decks, I think. Yeah, this deck beats up. Yeah, for sure. Um, just because you can hit that high damage number pretty easily. Yeah. So. But uh, this struggles against fast stuff, I think, and it struggles against ability lock and. Yeah, but it's still warrant of a two seed because uh, Aromatis's ability is actually just really good. <laughs> yeah, for sure. If only Xerneas had a little bit more HP. Um, Xerneas Break gives it a little bit extra, and so does Finding Fury Belt. But um, outside of that, you're dealing with a lot of EX attackers. But they're basics, so no set yep. required. And the last tier, uh, tier two deck, uh, Arcanine. Yeah, this was kind of an idea that we found on the UN50 page. I don't. It, they did their little tournament in Arcanine One, and we liked the. We really liked the concept. We we're gonna probably tweak their list a little bit, but uh, just fast Arcanine aggro with Blacksmith and the new supporter from uh, the new set that attaches four fires, cool. and then you have Arcanine Break to kind of accelerate fires from your discard as well. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna blow stuff up, like 190 and 150 on. I think the I think the the Sun and Moon one's an EX, but the Evolutions one is a non EX. Mm -hmm. um, and having this acceleration to itself when it goes to the active. Um, yeah, that's real good. You're just gonna get all that energy on board and just start swinging for 150 over and over again. Yep. It's really fast. Arcanine Break is just a good card too. Mm -hmm. I really like Arcanine Break. Uh, moving on to the three seeds, we got Lost World. Uh, this is a very polarizing deck because. Some some matchups, if you like, they if they have one crucial attacker like like Jump Bluff or Gyarados, if you can somehow loss zone that, you probably just win the matchup. Yep. But against other matchups where they don't really care that much, then you're gonna struggle a lot more. I think. Yep. There are a lot of decks on the list that do require that one Pokemon to kind of get going. Um, for instance, if you're playing against uh, Moltres, uh, Moltres Eco Gym. And your Moltres gets lost on you just lose. <laughs> like, yeah. you LOL straight lose. Um, so, it's, uh, and also, like, it punishes, like, like, we're going to be playing the decks against each other. We know what Lost Zone does, but it does punish people who don't really know what's coming. Right. And doesn't really know that, like, oh, I need to keep Pokemon out of my hand and out of the discard pile. Yep. Because if, uh, if either of those things occur, you know, the, da the Lost Zone starts ramping up real quick. I think this deck gets a lot better too with the new Porygon Z. Yeah. So when you, because uh, you're gonna play, want to play the two-two Porygon like as a support thing anyway, and then Porygon Z says when you evolve it, 
when you play from your hand evolve Pokemon, you de-evolve all your opponent's shit, and then you do that, and you just hurl into darkness. And that's really a breasted combo. Yeah, especially because you're going to be de-evolving all their support Pokemon. Mm -hmm. This, uh, I have high hopes. I like this deck a lot. It's a lot of fun to play, too. Yep. Uh, Don Fizzle. Don Feezy. Uh, this... What's that? Don Feezy. Don... My boy, Don Feezy. Don, Don Carlos. The problem with this deck is it just doesn't... I'll start with the problem, because this deck just does not have a very high damage output. So some decks, like... Magnezone can just stick a Zapdos up there and just say, all right, spinning turn me for 20 a turn. I don't give a shit. Right. The good thing about the deck is that you are trading, like, you're pot-shotting damage and they're not taking prizes because you're spinning into Mysterious Fossils, mm -hmm. Robo-Subs, uh, Baby Pokemon, Mr. Mime. You're, you're spinning into all these cool things so that they have to kind of get, like, Lysander and Gust and Guzma, like, yeah. a whole bunch. So. And then you still get access to all the, the fighting support. You get Focus Sash and Karina and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Yep. I like this deck a lot. Um, but it is the three seed, I think, is an appropriate spot for it. Um, yeah, definitely. Because it, it's, it's a lot of fun, and it's you have some cool stuff that you wouldn't play in many other decks. And that's the cool thing about U150 that I like a lot is when you play like these unique cards. That right. are like, whoa, this card doesn't see play ever. And the Dawn Fan's one of those ones that like has all these weird walls. Yep. Uh, next up, we have Garchomp Restore. I'm gonna let you talk about this one. Yeah, buddy. Uh, so the Garchomp line in, in in just normally Garchomp is actually a pretty good archetype. You have you have the one from Breakpoint. It can do just a crap load of damage for your treat, 60 and acceleration. Like that one's good. You have the one from Dragon's Exalted that's gonna do 60 for one energy. There's a couple of the Garchomps that are actually pretty good. But you can play um, Garchomp level X. And um, and be able to restore out big heavy hitters like Primal Groudon um, and some other cool big fighting Pokemon that you normally wouldn't be able to play or wouldn't be able to play easily in the U150 format. You could do Machamp GX even. Yes, you could. You could do Machamp GX. That'll actually probably go in here because um, it has to be. I'm pretty sure it's going to be fighting oriented because most of the guard chomps require fighting energy. Yeah, definitely. So, um, you know, Primal Groudon, Machamp GX, um, like there, Lucario, Mega Lucario, mm -hmm. um, that sort of thing. Stuff that's just gonna like big bopping hit, and like you're gonna take cheap prizes early with Garchomps, and then like if you can get one or two restores off, and you get these just big monster dudes that are gonna swing, um, yep. they can carry games. Problem is that it it might not be the fastest setup in the world. And, yeah, I think uh, this is going to be a late game monster of a deck. If you can uh, survive and keep it pretty close, you're going to win the late game. I think. Yeah, it's so hard to knock out Primal Groudon, dude. Like. Oh yeah. And it just—it's like munching you in the face for a 200 turn. Yep. Can't can't do anything, and you can't Lysander it up, right? Like you can't. No. You can just sit on the bench until you're ready to like go wild. I definitely think though that you'll need Machamp because Machamp's weak to Psychic and the. Groudon's weak to grass, so yeah. if you're playing like against Jumpluff, you'll get them a champ out. And if you're playing against like Tool Drop, you'll get the Groudon out, you know? Yep. No, I agree. There, there's there's going to be like, I want to say three Pokemon that are going to be target restorers. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably all ones with different weakness. We'll find them. Um, there'll be stuff. So, uh, moving on to Gardevoir Gallade. Yeah, this kind of gets. Gets gets a thing because of the new Gardevoir GX gets coming a out. Thing, he says, "Huh?" You said gets a thing. It, it it gets a thing, and that thing is Gardevoir GX. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you could play this deck also with the the double psychic Gardevoir, the one that makes psychic count for two. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot of good Gardevoirs that like focus more on psychic and they like accelerate from the deck. But I think Gardevoir GX is just like a little bit too busted to like not play. Yeah, I agree. Um, and there's there's some good fairy support. There's not some good fairy support. There's there's some fairy support out there, um, and these delays are are gonna just take knockouts pretty easily. Um, yeah. Premonitions super good in combination with uh, uh, played all and Porygon that sort of thing. This is kind of a weird situation where usually you have to struggle and be like, all right, which which of these are good enough to play in a line? This is like. There's so many good options, you don't know which ones you want to play, because there's a ton of good Gardevoirs and Gallades. Yes, there are. So. 
we haven't totally figured this one out, but we know that these cards are all inherently powerful enough that this will be a very solid deck, at least. It's going to be a storm of power. A powerful storm, if you will. Ah, okay. Uh, this is stage one rush. And uh, this, one's, this one's you. Yes. So, I saw the this Parasec. I was going through old cards. I'm like, whoa, this Parasec's not bad. You just uh, do 70 for one energy. And then I saw the uh, the Kerbominal from the new set. You do 80 for one energy. And then you have Dawn Fan that does 60 for one energy. So the, basically the idea here is just you run Binder Drop Stage 1s. You have nothing but like one energy Stage 1 attackers that do a lot of damage for one or two energy. And you try to hit type coverage with weakness with a bunch of different stuff. And that's the deck. We haven't really figured out what all Stage 1s are going to go in this, but... We know just like a very quick stage one rush thing will be pretty solid. Yeah, uh, and I when we when we brought ideas up to each other, I said binder drop uh, would have been a good like some for some basics. But then when Grady Poth brought this stage one rush idea up, it was like, oh yeah, let's just like find the weirdest things that we can possibly play and cram them all onto a deck and just mm -hmm. it's kind of like fighting dot deck but a little bit different. Yeah. So I like this. It's gonna be fun to build. Uh, Armaldo lock. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Um, so, so uh, uh, this Houndoom has always been one of my, like, kind of favorite, like, oh, man, wouldn't it be fun to play a deck around this? Um, and obviously, it combined with some sort of supporter lock is going to be good, too. So, uh, your options are going to be Armaldo, uh, Stoutland, uh, even, like, Executor or something to lock both trainers and supporters. Um but I think this combo is the best because it lets you still get trainer cards. Um, mm -hmm. And if you ever fall behind, you have this other Steam Siege Armaldo that is really good because it's a, you're doing 100 damage, reducing by 30 on a 150 HP non-EX Pokemon. Yep. Um, I think that Armaldo itself is good, and that's why I kind of... Like, it started with that Armaldo and then transitioned into, oh, I remember this Houndrum you can play. And so if you get this combo out where they have, like, nothing on the field and you get Armaldo Haldoom with nothing, like, they just can't play any cards and Blade mm -hmm. Arms is going to be enough to finish you out. So, um, um... And the thing is, you can... This is, like, a Fossil deck, so you can always just discard your Fossils to activate Lonesome later on in the game if you need to. Yeah. There's a lot of... Uh, we have a lot of switching effects and, and removing effects and not a lot of support Pokemon to kind of get this lockout kind of early. There's, no, there's not a lot of bench sitters. Um, mm -hmm. Just because if you get this lockout and they're not set up, you win, like, period. Mm -hmm. They can't shut it off. They can't play Goop or Hex to shut off either of the things. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm excited for this deck. I don't remember what its matchup is right off the bat, but I'm excited. Next up is Vileplume Lock. Yeah. I like that you only have one, uh, one picture here. Yeah, there's a reason for that. <laughs> We, we know we want to build an item-locking Vileplume deck. We just don't know what to pair it with yet. So if so, you have yeah. any ideas, comment below. Like, comment, subscribe. Smash that MFF like button. You know? That's uh, that's the deck. It's just Vileplume it's, slash attackers. It's just this one. It's just Solar Beam Vileplume. You're just going to try to Solar Beam as many times as you can. You okay. Know? Okay. <laughs> Next up, we got uh, uh, Crobat and or Chandelure Rush. Yeah, so this was actually like... My very first, when Alex introduced me to UN50, this was like the first thing I wanted to do. Was like, what if you just build like Broken Time Space Crobat with like a hell, a fuck ton of scoop of effects? And that was like my first baby. So this this deck has a special place in my heart. But basically, it's just very low low energy. You run Broken Time Space, and you try like on the first couple turns to use Surprise Bite as many times as you can using Scoop Up, Item Finder, Junk Arm. And we also have thought about maybe using the Chandelure and switching effects to kind of also add chip damage in there. We're not entirely sure what this build looks like, but it's going to be... If your opponent doesn't start with some bulky Pokemon, they're just going to lose in the first couple turns. Uh, yeah, because Chandelure gets the same effects as Crobat, so when you de-evolve Chandelure, you can reuse Curse Shadow. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we, you know, we're figuring, hey, if we just go mono Chandelure, that also might be a thing. But then you don't get the attack, like you don't get skill dive, which actually can be pretty big. Um, and you can't, you have to do it in the active, so there's some weird stuff there. But we don't know what it looks like, but it's gonna be fun. Yep. 
Uh, next up, we're going to the tier four here. Embor! So this is the worst of the three energy rainers with Blastoise and Magnezone. Because fire, cause the Embor line itself is pretty shitty. Besides this one, there aren't any like actual good Embor attackers there necessarily. Only, what, I said three Embors to choose, or there's only two? There's three. There's three. There's three. There's one from Boundary yeah. Frost and one from Black and White that are different. And I think you said this one had been reprinted like four times or something. Yes. Promo. <laughs> LT, or yeah, promo, legendary treasures, and the secret rare. Yeah. Um, the thing is, the fire, the fire type attackers you're going to be Inferno Fan dangling to just aren't as good as the Magnazone and the Blastoise ones. But it, this ability is still just inherently so good that it's still tier four ish. We think. Yep. Depends. Like if we build the, if we look through this stuff and we see that it's bad, we're going to be like, oh wow, we put this way too high, or oh wow, we put this way too low. So yeah. that's why tier four is kind of a safe pick to, you know, the tier fours have to play the tier fives, and all these middling decks are gonna, th those are gonna be like the best games right off the bat. I feel. Yeah. So I'm really excited. But there's Embor. Uh, Speed Drill. Uh, yeah, so this is. Go ahead. Yeah, Beedrill Swarm. You're gonna get as many Beedrills out as possible, and either snipe for, you know, 120 or 160, or ban attack for 120, pretty cheap. Um, it's hard to get out all these bead drills quickly and this deck wants to go quick um, so that's where it's kind of awkward but um, once you get them out sniping for these this damage is is pretty important and pretty big and it's awesome to me this deck is just kind of a worse version of jump bluff yes I, it's almost the same skeleton um, um, you still need forest except jump bluff you only need to set up one jump bluff with this you need at least you know three or four bead drills to make it worth it yep um, and the second one requires two energy like uh, two energy to attach, so you have to play double rainbow. Or if you fall behind, you kind of have to like. I've been debating putting EXP share in the deck just so you can. Yeah, this deck is just definitely a much harder to set up, slower version of beat of uh, jump bluff. Yep. No. But it's still good. It'll still overwhelm some stuff. For sure. Uh, Incineroar GX dot deck. <laughs> okay, this one's a fun one because. We always talk about, oh, you need you need 1-1 one, one Claydol, you need 2-2 two, two Porygon. This deck is probably going to be one of the very few decks that does not have either of those cards. Because you need as many fire types on your bench as possible, so probably we're going to lean towards like a, a Ninetales kind of engine. Hey, we just hit 100 subscribers! Hell yeah, dude. I just got the notification, yay! Dude. Celebrate. So yeah, I think that's what we'd lean towards, is running like Ninetales Roast Reveal kind of stuff. And just to have as many fires as you can. And then you can Hustling Strike every turn and heal it, but uh, I don't know, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think it's 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 another one of those 250 HP tank arenas. Like, mm -hmm. um, we've talked about it a lot in this already, and I think it's just another example. And for one energy, being able to swing is big, so... yeah. I think this is, like, the worst of the GX decks on here, but it's still, I think it could be pretty solid. Agreed. Uh, uh, dedicated Eevees. Mm -hmm. This is all you, I believe. Yeah, um, so we've had Eevees, Eevee lines sprinkled out in random stuff before, just as support, but this deck, I think, is just going to be, you can run five different Eevees because there's one LT Surges Eevee, and then you can play four regular Eevees. So your Eevee line's probably going to be something like, I don't know, 5, 7, 2 or something weird like that. You're going to try to hit for type coverage, and there's a lot of synergy effects with all the different Eevees that have been printed, and that's it. It's just going to be kind of a stage 1 Eevee rush thing. Yeah, very similar to stage 1 rush, just a little bit worse, I think. Yeah. Uh, next is Raikou Ente Legend. Just the bottom half. You don't play the top half. No. No. You don't need the top half. That's bad. But top half's bad. I mean, Wait, you have, is you have, that you have unlimited HP here? Is that a? Are you sure you're allowed to play that? No. Like, okay. No, stop. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, we. This guy is just like a worse Weavile, because the Thunderfall attack does 80 to each Pokemon that has Poke Powers, so it doesn't hit uh, nice. bodies and static abilities. But it hits 80, so you're shotting Porygon two and Claydol. Yes. So. And its first attack is also not the worst. Nope. Problem is, it's a 130 HP poke. It's 130 HP, right? Or is that more than that? It's 140. 140. Uh, and it yeah. gives up two prizes. 
and it's hard to hard to get out. You can't. It's really hard to find the Pokemon, even with like all the U one fifty search. Like yeah. it's more it's trickier to get out. But so, but Thunderfall in itself is just a really good attack for your treat. You know, never bad either. Um, mm -hmm. We don't know what we're gonna pair this with. Probably um, E Electric. It's gonna be one of them. And Speed Gain Rayquaza. And Speed Gain Quaza. Yeah, baby. I can't wait for this. Uh, here we go. This is the this is my uh, the most hype deck. I feel <laughs> this deck like I want to make a bracket where this deck wins because it's awesome. Yeah. So this, I go this for is it. my favorite thing I've come up with so far. I'm gonna yeah. be honest. This is this is all greedy. Uh, he came up with this idea. He's like he's like how can we get as many energies on bronze on break to metal rain? And I was just like. I don't know, we could like metal links a couple times, this, this, and he's like, no, 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 think bigger, think like Togekiss. I was like, oh, and he wants to one-shot all six Pokemon in one go. Yes. Like, that's the idea here. So basically, you're going to try to get a lot of metals in the discard pile. Extra energy bomb, like evolve, an, evolve into Electrode, extra energy bomb, evolve another Voltorb that's on the bench, extra energy bomb that, and just kind of like metal rain spread and kill everything on the side of their field. Yeah, so this is, this is not a very... You, like Pokemon deck. This is like a one-hit like Hearthstone magic kind of thing. You want to just like take one turn, get a big turn off, energy, extra energy bomb a few times, drop a parallel city to limit them to three Pokemon on their bench, and then just discard like 11 or 12 metal energies and metal rain for like, what would that be? 300 plus damage across all their shit. And try to just one-hit KO all their stuff. It's, it's bananas. I don't know how it will actually work. We tried to do the math on some things. Uh, there was one scenario where we needed like 20 energy on bronze or something. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, come on, this deck seems awesome. <laughs> like, I am super stoked to try this deck. Yeah, it's unfortunately we put it as a four seed. It's gonna have to go against one of those weird five seeds. But a lot of those five seeds actually have uh, not much HP going on for them. Yeah, I'm looking at them all right now. Tyranitar is like the only one that you don't want to face. And I don't yep. believe it's facing it. Bronze on Break, I believe, is facing Fossil Lock. If I'm not mistaken. So. Okay. Uh, moving on, though. Uh, Vigavolt. This is another one where we're like, hey, Vigavolt's a good ability, we just don't know what to pair it with yet. Yeah, um, this is not necessarily a deck, it's just a card that we need to figure out. <laughs> this is this is a card. That, that it's going to be, it's one, one Vigavolt, 99 energies. It's, it shows promise. 48 Grass, 48 Lightning. Uh, Gliscor! Gliscor! Gl Gliscor. So this is just kind of going to be mono, or just just Gliscor, you get all the fighting support. All the Gliscors are pretty solid, they all have to do with status conditions, generally. And the Gliscor level X is auto-paralyze on your uh, coming into play, which is very good. It's less good in U150, but it's still very strong, I feel like. Yep, there's a lot of cool things in this deck. It's one of those things like in the hands of a good player, you're gonna come up with what you need to do. It's got a lot of tools to win the game. Mm -hmm. um, it might not be the best, but you know you can always find a way to win with different class scores. It's gonna um, be fun too. I don't know where we're at on time, but I feel like we're using a lot up and we're hitting the halfway point. So that's that's these we're gonna try to speed up for you. So five uh, C Tyranitar. It's a uh, Tyranitar. What else do you need to know? Boom, Tyranitar. Moving on. No. Um, yeah, like. It's going to be this late game deck where you're trying to accelerate a lot of energies, do the pokey powers and abilities, and just swing. Yeah, the Raging Roar ability is really good in this format, because there's eight prizes instead of six, so you'll have a lot of, a couple of opportunities to use this, most likely. Yep. Still, though, early game, it's going to struggle. Yep. Uh, top deck Typhlosion, Massive Eruption. Is this with the uh, Delcaddy now? or? Yeah, Delcaddy and Macargo. Not, yeah, Delcaddy, Macargo, uh, Mantine. It's basically just like you're creating the top deck so that massive eruption can blow up anything. Um, yep. The problem with this deck is that it's EX and it and it's uh, um, you have to have a lot of setup on your side, and you don't yeah. get the benefits of Porygon because you have to play Delcaddy. I also I think I remember when I played this, it was very hard if your Typhlosion knocked out to get it back. It was very hard to recover that generally. Right. So maybe we just need to build it a little different. Yeah. Um, Fossil Lock. This deck has gone through a lot of changes, I feel. We tried it with uh, um, Regigigas, we want to try it with Mewtwo. We just need to find a right build for it, but these these together are pretty good. So, 
What are we leaning towards right now? Just like big basics with all this stuff? Yeah, me too, I think. Yeah. Uh, Banette Lock. Another thing that can get, just get, you know, there's stuff that gets around this sort of lock deck strategies. Mm hmm. So. Generally, Spirit Tomb, Wally, stuff like that. Yep. Uh, Ampharos, Frozen City. Yeah, so this is just like energy hate. Most mostly, you just it's kind of like a, a spread deck a little bit, but uh, you just need to punish your opponent for every time they attach an energy. But obviously, it's just going to be very matchup based, depending on if your opponent attaches a lot of energy. Like against Magnezone, this deck will probably do pretty well. Mm -hmm. But against stuff like Dawn Fan, that only attaches one energy, or like the Stage One thing that only attaches one energy, it's not going to do very well. I don't think. Uh, Quad Week Vileplume, spend a minute talking about this, uh, there's someone at the door. This is probably my favorite, one of my favorite things we've come up with. So the Kecleon here, when I first, when we, I first talked to Alex about this, he didn't get it, but then you have to think, you get Fighting Stadium, you get Strong Energy, you get Splash Energy, you get Rough Seas, every conceivable, like, type support, you can play with this Kecleon. And then you get the Times 4 Week Vileplume. So you one-shot everything. But the problem with this deck is it's the classic hex-goop thing, that if your opponent hexes and goops you, then you just lose your turn. So that's why this deck is only a 5 seed. If hex and goop weren't a thing, this deck would be tier 1. But you could say that about a lot of stuff. Um, but uh, this is one of my favorite decks we've built just because of the the crazy weird synergies you get with Kecleon. And you get Dimension Valley, you get uh, Focus Sash, every just weird and underutilized type synergy you can just chuck in, and it all applies to Kecleon. And it's hilarious to, you know, have a splash energy, be using Dimension Valley, and triple smashing for, like, 200 damage with times four week wild plume, so. It's pretty sweet. Uh, uh, Ada Slash BKT. Yes. Um, this one is going to be very built very similarly to Spread. Um, the pl the differences are you can't target down like Dustmore is going to be able to target down a specific Pokemon to kill, whereas mm -hmm. Ada Slash is going to ramp up the damage more. Mm -hmm. So Ada Slash will do more damage, but Dustmore has a little bit more versatility. That's why I put this as a five seed, <coughs> just because it's going to lose to things like Rough Seas. Or just any sort of healing thing to keep your one attacker fresh. Right. Um, but uh, it sounds fun. Yeah, no. I think the Dustnor version will be better, but this one will be a lot more fun. <laughs> Correct. Uh, and then burn that deck. Burn, baby, burn. Yes. There's a lot of burn synergy out there, and with the new burn rulings, you're going to take 40 just for fun, but due to these two cards. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of cool things, like with Heatmore, and, uh, like, the Heatmore says, like, they always flip tails on burn, um, right. and, like, they can't remove burn by evolving. So, there's some synergy here, we just kind of have to find, um, something to go with it. We have a rough skeleton idea, but nothing yeah. set in stone. Um, that's it for Tier 5, Tier 6, Tangrowth! Uh, so this is just... A, a one 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 Tangrowth and seven and ninety seven Grass Energies. <laughs> uh, uh, there's two Tangrowths that do <laughs> something that like for every energy attached, um, and Big Growth is just a really good attack in this format. I feel. Yeah. Like, dang. Like, and if you and if your Tangrowths die, you just like Big Growth again. You're just like, bam! Like. Big Growth. Big Growth. Here's all these things back. So, um, seems fun. I'm really excited. Yep, it'll be solid, but not spectacular. If Tails put one energy attached to the defending Pokemon in the Lost Zone. Ooh. I didn't even notice that. Plow over, baby? But it's only 30 damage. So? Okay. Put a big T in there, flip Tails, put all their energy in the Lost Zone. Win. What? It, it, you only get to do it once. Yeah, so you, you do okay. it, you flip Tails, it goes in the Lost Zone, and then they don't knock you out, and the next turn you do it again. Boom. <laughs> Got yourself, uh, got yourself a Tangrowth. Got yourself a Tangrowth. Uh, uh, this is Retreat Amplifier. Yes. There's a lot of cool cards that increase your opponent's retreat and also does more damage for every retreat that they have. Yeah. 
Gudra will probably be your main attacker. There's definitely, what's the grass not one? Blossom? There's a Blossom that does a similar thing, yeah. Yeah, um, there's Jalicent to add retreat. There's there's a couple of mucks that do the same thing. Uh, the there's Alone, base. Alone and Doug Drio. Yeah, so you can definitely add you know four or five retreat costs pretty realistically, cool. and that's on top of whatever they already have. Yep. The problem is uh, Floatstone and uh, Fluffy Berry just uh, screw your whole strategy here. Yep. So you have to probably play Windstorm and Trollscrapper, maybe. Yeah. Well, just Windstorm and Field Blower. Oh, duh. I forgot about that. So. Um, Mega Manetric, another yet another one. We don't know what we're pairing it with yet, but since it just got on banned, it's still a very good card. And it was originally banned for a reason, so we need to play this because I think 110 over and over in Accelerating 2 is kind of busted. Yep. And we can also uh, play... This is, this is definitely a deck we haven't figured out what we're Accelerating to yet, so... Uh, you're going to Accelerate to Speed Gain Quaza. Oh, okay. Over and over again. JK, we figured it out. Cool. Uh, poison Dot deck. Um, yeah, we wanted to do an archetype for each of the three. Like, we have a burn archetype, we have a sleep one, we have a poison one. And technically, we, we do think have a paralyzed one. We do have a paralyzed one, yes. Sorry. Yeah. But uh, we think this one, you have the Surviper. This Surviper adds 10 more damage. The Verbank City Gym, obviously, which you're all probably very familiar with. Um, there's got to be. I think there's another couple Pokemon that add poison damage. Although there's ones that, like, when you get poisoned, take X number between turns. Right. So. Uh, there's the Dralgy, too, that makes your poison Pokemon not be able to retreat. So. There's some good synergy so. here. We're excited. Just poison that deck. Uh, Reuniclus. Oh. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk. Okay. Link Fusion, I think, is a pretty decent attack. There's also another Reuniclus that does 40 for every Reuniclus you have in play. So, it's even a weaker Beedrill. Um, is kind of what it is. <laughs> uh, you have to remember also the Uniclus, um, it, it stacks for each one, so if you have, um, if you have a Solosis, a Delosion, and a Uniclus on your bench, you add 180 damage. Oh, okay. Yeah, it stacks. It doesn't go for every Solosis, but it says if there is a Solosis, if there is a Delosion, if there's a Uniclus, blow something up. I actually didn't realize that. <laughs> yeah, it's not, yeah. So, so you're doing a lot of damage that way. You, you set this Reuniclus up. The other Reuniclus does damage for every Uniclus. If they can't hit 90 for whatever reason, uh, you have this damage swap to kill all your stuff. And if you're playing Don Fan. If you're playing Don Fan, <laughs> damn it. Um, and this, I think this Reuniclus is a non-EX. The only EX one is the black and white one. So mm -hmm. I don't I think it has potential. Cool. Oh! I forgot this is coming up. Palkia Dialga Legend, baby. Hell yeah. This is like the the weird... This is the only mill deck that's actually a deck, I think. It's actually going to work, yes. So the problem with mill in this format is that everyone plays Trump card, but what if your opponent's Trump card was prized? Ooh. Mm -hmm. Well, what if your opponent had 30 prize cards to take? Ooh. <laughs> um... That, yeah, there's a lot of ways to accelerate to time control. Bronze Song might be the way, but we also might try Metal Gross. Um, and basically you're just going to try to time control as many times until it dies. And the cool part is if you you have this cool thing where like if you time control at least twice per Palkia Dialga Legend life, you are plussing on the card. Yep. Because if you time control and it dies, oh well, like... You went even. You went even on that. So if you can do it at least twice and then anything more than that is gravy, and if one of those times you manage to prize their trump card, like, wee, Like, we win. You know what, dude? You can play Eco Gym with this shit. I, uh, I mean, yeah. I just love Eco Gym. <laughs> I, mean, I want Eco Gym in every deck. Uh, this will be fun. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, no, me too. Last explosion. Um, the new. Is it? We we should actually read that. Is it only something to fire Pokemon? No, it. I made sure to check. It's to any Pokemon. Okay. Um. So yeah, you can get like this sick life explosion like to fill up your bench because of the new supporter that accelerates to it. Um, before, it was always a difficulty getting a lot of energies on, but this is like the easiest way. Yeah. We just don't know what we're pairing it with yet. So ideally, you know, your turn one, you're going to be able to attach a grass and then turn two and use the supporter and then turn two, evolve into Cradley and Life Explosion for four or for five, I guess. Which is not too hard to do, to be honest. But uh, we just haven't figured out what we're life explosioning for yet, so uh, 
We we know there's probably some combination of stage twos that just create a win condition, but we don't know what that is yet. Yep. And it's hard to set up and hard to sustain because once your state once one of your important stage two gets knocked out, you have to life explosion again. Yep. So succeed. Uh, here's your paralyzed lock deck. Yeah, this is kind of like the old school uh, Dustnor Excelgor decks that would just uh, auto paralyze and then control damage output to make sure you would always stay paralyzed and die coming back into your turn or whatever. So the Raichu, when you evolve it, you par paralyze your opponent's active Pokemon and then your attack would disconnect so they can't get out of it with uh, scoop up switch effects and stuff. So their only outs to it is like AZ and Briny's Compassion. And, and just, Olympia! And Olympia. And oh, and also Guzma. Guzma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's why it succeeds. Yeah. Uh, moving on to the seven seeds. This is this this one's dedicated to my homie Andrew, who would only play this deck. Uh, you see off the Rhyperior level X Mew with with Mew turn one, and then you just play like fifty psychic energies or something crazy, and you just hard crush every turn after that with Mew. Blow things up. Uh, so King <laughs> Wait, where's the uh, Blaine's Last Resort? Oh, I forgot to put Blaine's Last Resort. Okay, this is Blaine's Last Resort. This is the name of the deck. I forgot to put Blaine's Last Resort on this thing. <laughs> I'm a failure. Uh, that, uh. Anyways, uh, so the new Slow King, the second attack is 110. If you and if you don't have any cards in your hand, you can use it for free. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the Raticate does 10 plus 50 if it's got a tool on there. And you can see the attack cost is for free. So the idea is to like get your hand down to like no cards and hit for 110, or hit with Raticate uh, for free. It's like a no energy type of deck. Um, mm -hmm. And the reason you play Blaine's Vessels is because you found this card that if it's the last card in your hand, you can play it and draw into a five. So it's like a worse bike. <laughs> very uh, well, yeah, kind of. But. Um, so you're playing Slow King, so you play the Future Side Slow King, so like your top decks always are going to draw you cards. Mm -hmm. It's a bad deck. but it's and Then you play stuff like Maintenance, you play the Reggie Ice, the discards too from your hand, just so you always have ways to uh, get your hand down to zero. It's going to be fun. Yep. Uh, Shift your dunk. Yeah, if you've, uh, if you've been following Expanded, you know what this guy does. It's uh, not quite as good in UN50 because you can only play one of e the Shift Tree. But uh, you still, you're, you're just kind of limited by how many scoop of effects you can play in one turn, and you just auto lose to spirit tomb starts generally. So, yeah, that's gonna achieve some wins, but we don't have high hopes. Yeah. Polyto, Polyrath, Polydeck. Oh, you didn't put the uh, good Polyrath here either. I was lazy. Okay. Yeah, there's a Polyrath. Um, God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look it up now just because you're a lazy ass. It does. Uh, it does. It's from uh, 80 plus 80 if they're affected by a special condition for one water yeah. DC. Um. So then when you get those polytoed out, you get to use that for one water. So hopefully you hit 160 for one water, which is pretty solid. But uh, you lose to stuff like goop, and you have to get all these polytoads and polyraths out to even utilize this energy, so it's going to be very slow and fragile to get set up. Yep. So. And all I have to do is Lysander kill your Polytoad, and you're like, well, crap. Yep. I have to get this back. So, I don't know. It might be higher than 7, but we'll see. I think it's a it's a sleeper 7, but um, no high hopes for me. Uh, Macargo dot deck. I, like, we mm. think the, I think the Macargos just, like, together are, aren't bad. Um, there's gonna, it's one of those weird ones that you can always find a way to win, kind of like Gliscor, just worse. Yeah. So. We're definitely getting into a tier. We ran out of ideas tier. <laughs> right. Uh, Salazzle, another one. This Salazzle by itself, 110 for two energies, just like Mega Metric, just a little worse. But you have mm -hmm. fire support. Um, so I think I think just like having this big 200 HP like swinging in your face is not the worst ever. Um, yeah. If you can keep it alive. Uh, hand fling, machine gun stomp. <laughs> build up, build up your hand and swing. Yep, uh, have you figured out how you're going to do that? Not yet. Moving okay. on. <laughs> Arceus. The last seven yeah, seed. Turns out, the, okay, the problem with Arceus in this format is you can't use Claydol, you can't use Porygon, you can't use any support Pokemon. And you really need that stuff to get by in this format. Without it, you just kind of run out of gas and you run out of card draw and you just lose. Yep. So. Uh, moving on to the eight seeds, the entertaining ones. Uh, Lucario. Um, 
you have if you're gonna play around the fight alone thing, you're not gonna have very many Pokemon on your side of the field. Armaldo actually like legitimately locks them to your speed, but Lucario, mm. you're not like locking them to your speed. You're just swinging, and then they're like, "Cool, knockout," and then you're like, "Well, I don't have anything left." Yep. So it's gonna be around stance. Um, it's gonna be around a lot of different things to make this deck work, but I don't think it will. Uh, Sabrina's Kadabra. Flip this coin. is kind of a, if you ever played the Raticate Break Poison thing, this is like a uh, worse version of that. <laughs> <laughs> Raticate, we, we found out was going to be probably hard to charge up and, and re like use like reliably over and over again. So instead of trying to get our DC back and to get Raticate back, Break back into play over and over again, just play Sabrina's Cadaver and take that flip chance. I mean, you have the Victini, so it's 75% chance you work. Yeah. So it's going to achieve some wins, but, you know. It's an 8 seed. It's got to go up against a 1 seed. Uh, what 1 seed is it going up against? It's going up against the second worst 1 seed. Fighting aggro. Oh. Yeah. yeah no, there's no way that wins that match. <laughs> no. Uh, SP.deck. This was kind of one where I just said, hey, I don't think this deck will be very good, but I want to build just an SP U150 deck. It's just something I want to do. So... There's obviously the Luxray will probably be the focus. There's the Garchomp that's very good. Probably Blaziken FB will be in this deck. And then you have the Cyrus Engine. But the problem is you can only play one of each of the Cyrus Engines, so it's not nearly as effective as back in the day when you actually played full on SP decks. But I still think it'll be fun. You'll have some options. I think this deck could be better than 8 seed if uh, if we build it correctly. Right. That's going to be the big if. Yeah. Um... And then, uh, moving on here, we got the Sleep Dot deck, your last uh, status condition dot deck. Is this going to be a, a Snorlax thing? Uh, Snorlax is one of the best attackers to use. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, so this is just, we wanted to do kind of one for each status condition. So this is the Sleep, and we definitely think it's the weakest of them. Uh, there's a couple of Sleep things that make it so you have to flip two coins to wake up. There's, like, Sleep effects where you take damage in between turns if you're asleep. But, uh... None of the sleep effects are particularly powerful, to be honest. No. Holland Circle Lock. <laughs> I'll let you talk about this one. All right, Holland Circle Lock. Uh, so Holland Circle, when when you attack, your turn ends and you don't get to attack, right? Uh, I'm trying to find my copy of it. It was right here. I love holding it when talking about it. Oh. If I can't, I'll die. I don't. Know okay. Um, but uh, yeah, and so it gets discarded. So basically, you use Gothitel to get. You place a stadium and then switch it back out so you can constantly use Holland Circle. And you play it with cards that like do snipe damage from the bench or um, that sort of thing. Uh, you, I think you play it mainly with like um, Pidgeot so you can recycle Crobat. So you can do like Crobat drops. Um, or you could just like play Chandler or Flygon. Chandler or Fly Ooh, Flygon. Yes. Flygon actually probably is the way to go with that better than the thing. But yeah, it just loses the goop. Like, you goop once, and you're like, well, there goes my entire strategy, because then you, like, take two knockouts on, like, really important stuff. Well, it stuff. also loses to just Windstorm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, your opponent playing a stadium. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, so uh, you lose to a lot of things, but it's cute. It's cute. Brock's Ninetales! Speaking of cute. Oh, I love this card so much. Yeah, this is only on here because uh, we love this card to death, uh, but it's bad. It took me a long time, because we had this a little bit of backstory, we had this in Alex's cube for a long time, and I hated this card for the longest time. I was like, why the, why the fuck is this in there? And I'm like, okay, and then one day I was like, alright, I'm gonna give this card a fair shot, I'm gonna try to build a deck around it. And it was the most fun I had ever had playing a cube, ever. And now, from now on, I just, I always look for opportunities to play, like, a stupid stage 2, like, toolbox thing, so. And then, here's your answer. Here's your answer. But, uh, it's still just, if you get hexed or goop, you just everything goes away, so... Uh, moving on, uh, the deck that we have talked about this entire time, the second worst deck in the, in the entire tournament. So Man, I want to just do a battle between the bottom tier decks, dude. Well, we, we, I mean, hey, the world we is We need to do a mini bracket of the worst eight decks and see which is, like, the best of the worst. That's how we should have seeded it. We should have broken into eights and then played all of these against each other in eight. Like, I want to see Unknown take on Moltres Mill, dude. Okay, so basically, like, you attach as many fires as you want to wildfire, but then when you discard those uh, fire inches, they go back to your hand if Eco Gym is in play. And so mm -hmm. then the next turn, you wildfire again. <laughs> the problem is, it's, it's like, ah, oh, shit. 
<laughs> like, it's a it's a mill deck, and if they go trump card, you're like, well, they gotta do that all again. Like, <laughs> so like you kind of have to like oaks their uh, trump away. Yep. Yeah. All right. And then last but not least, unknown. No, last and least. Oh, and last and least. <laughs> unknown. Um, we just wanted to build a deck with unknowns. It's gonna. You get, didn't want to. I, I didn't want, want to. to. Grady wanted to. It's trash. <laughs> it's gonna get stomped on. It's like against Magnazone round one. It has to play Magnazone round one, and there's like a zero percent chance unknown pulls that upset. Yeah. No. I. I just. I do. Next bet. So yeah, there you have it. There's all the seeds. Hope you learned something. That video was like way longer than I thought, but. Um, Ooh, we talked about 64 decks, dude. Yeah. But I uh, hope you guys have fun filling out your brackets. We'll get this tournament rolling ASAP. Because um, I'm getting really hype off this. So, But uh, any last words, Brady? Uh, what was your pick to win the tournament again? Jump off. Jump off. And mine was just Magnazone, I think. Magnazone. Uh, let's see. Right now there are, I think, six brackets filled. Uh, look at predictions here. Uh, I had Jump Bluff beating Tool Drop in the finals. You had Magnazone being Jump Bluff in the finals. Um... It looks like Ronnie. Oh, I found it based off the uh, thing. Ronnie Shun over at Yahoo.com has Mega Manetric beating Gardevoir Delayed. Um, <sighs> uh, create an upset, I guess. Drew at DP Faust. Uh, SP deck beating Tool Drop. Yep. Uh, Rice, Riz, Rice, R Y H Y S Blinks uh, has Magnazone beating Kendra. And uh, last guy here, Qwerty, Zoryberg Noise, has Kendra beating Tool Drop. Yeah. So uh, we're re we're pretty hyped about this. Go fill out a bracket. We'll probably do like a prize for the winner, like Alex said. And uh, yeah, play U150. It's a fun ass format. Thanks for watching, guys. Okay, that was enough time to edit it. Later. Sweet.